Welcome to the video. I had some craving for some landscape photography adventures, as I often do. And well, we are going out on one of those everyday photography adventures together in today's video. I do have one topic in mind I would like to discuss with you. As you might know, I'm quite careful and selective with my subjects out in the field. I try and have that photography eye and have that final image in mind. But it doesn't always turn out as you think. The back screen of your camera is a liar sometimes. We'll return to that subject at the end of the video. For now, let's head to the beach. Welcome to the beach. Quite a windy day today. I just stepped out behind one of the sand dunes here to get a break from the wind. Hardly anyone out in the beach. I can't imagine why. And it isn't any old beach. If we were to Google like Sweden's most beautiful beaches, I'm sure we would find this in the top 10. It's this very fine corn sand beach with quite a few sand dunes. So we have some exploration to do. Let's see if we can find any images today. This was harder than I expected. I kind of had this idea that I want to make some really like surreal images at this place. Uh, but I can't find those images. There is potential for that. We have this furious wind blowing over the beach here, creating a very nice, uh, nice looking sand with some texture to it and some shape and some. It looks interesting to the naked eye. I just can't capture it with the camera. Uh, I just ended up doing what everyone else would have been doing, uh, like just shooting the grasses around here. Uh, and they don't really work any of the images. Uh, I might just put up a couple of those on the screen now, but I don't think these works. Uh, they are like what everyone else would photograph at this place, and you've seen them a million times before. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, but that's not just what I'm chasing today. And as always, I kind of cut it a bit short, so I just have about an hour left. So we'll see if we'll be able to make any good images here. I think this is the best of my grass images this far. Uh, I have this little opening here. We have the sand dune to the left uh, that is covered with the grass. Uh, yeah, it kind of works, but I'm not happy with it. It's, uh, it's a try. It's an ex something to work with. Um, I'll continue to see what I can find. I do want to get away with at least one image today. That would be nice, wouldn't it?
I came here for the beach. But I actually enjoy the woodlands here more. It's incredible. Just look at it, it's beautiful. This place in black and white has a lot of potential. So I might just return here with one of my film cameras. Some FP4 at this place. Yeah, that would be lovely. Unfortunately, I haven't really found anything to photograph today. Uh, and I am starting to lose light. I'm uh, starting to wander back towards my car. Hopefully, I'll find at least one image on the way back. So I did manage one last image. Uh, I'm not overly enthusiastic with this. It's kind of just a last final ditch attempt of making something of the day. Uh, but I am going to explain what drew me to this uh, little composition, this scene. As you might know, I do shoot quite a lot of black and white, especially when I do film photography. Uh, so I did notice these like uh, small grasses here. They have them on the beach as well. But here they are stood against a more darker background, which is quite interesting. Uh, is it heather? I don't know. But yeah, a darker vegetation here. And it stood out quite good here in black and white. And then you have a group of birches there to the left. That kind of works like an anchor to in the left hand side of the image. And then we have this like darker uh, vegetation sticking out. And then we have that lighter grass again. Quite a nice like little contrast in the scene. Uh, and a tree to the left and then beyond. And we have this quite moody sky. Uh, I think it might work. That's one thing I'm going to actually fix in the computer. There's a stub of a tree at the far end. I'm just going to clone that away in the final image. This might work. Uh, it was at least one little final image of the day. So, uh, I do hope it looks okay on the computer as well. One more image, and this I kind of feel like it's a sheep trick. I'm not a big fan of like a super shallow depth of field because, yeah, in landscape images, kind of want to see everything. But I'm using that here. Uh, so these grasses I spoke of before, uh, over here, going incredibly uh, low. So I'm on my knees here, uh, and just having one of those uh, grasses in the foreground and then shot the wide open, so F4 with the slants, uh, throwing everything out, else out of focus. And then we have that little group of trees I spoke of before, those uh, birches, uh, soft in the background, and then the moody skies in the background. I kind of think it works. Uh, it's strange. It's perhaps a bit cliche, but uh, might work, might work. seem to find the best images just as the light is fading and I'm heading home or back to the car. What we have here is a group of birches right about there and you know I do love myself some birches especially in black and white. It just works so well. But what makes this slightly more interesting is we have these like patches of the green mosses uh, among this dark background that helps that birches to stand out. But then we have that little light patch just next to the birches and it works quite well, uh, at least looking back at the screen of the camera. I had to crank the ISO quite a bit. I started with the uh, ISO 125, so base ISO. That gave me a shutter speed of like one second. And it was just a tad bit too slow to freeze uh, the branches as the wind shook them at this uh, quite windy day. I think I ended up at like ISO 6400 to get an adequately fast enough shutter. So yeah, 
hope it works out. I hope it, I got those branches pressed. Then I think this will be quite a nice image to end on. Now it's definitely back to the car. I often have an idea in mind for what I would like to create and how I want the finished product to look. But it's quite easy, at least for me, to be quite doubtful out in the field uh, looking at the back of the camera. As this date proved, I thought all those June shots was pure trash. And it was down to, well, me and two things. As you might know, I'm quite a big fan of black and white, so I had my camera set to Acros Film Simulation, so a black and white film prof profile. Secondly, I like myself a square format, so I had a one-to-one -one crop, as that's what I like to shoot, typically. And it was the completely wrong decision for that day. So I kind of ended up saving this in the edit. And the strange thing is, I didn't do anything particularly special with it. It's quite a simple edit, just broadened my mind and I ended up with a couple of images I'm actually quite proud of. So I thought I would share with you how I did this edit and uh, how it completely transformed my images with just small means. So let's get into Lightroom and I'll show you. So here we are in Lightroom. The first thing I do when I get my images imported to computer is I'm just doing a rough calling. So giving every image I like, or somewhat like, a star rating. Often just a two star just to start uh, narrowing down. And then continue doing that. And then ended up in this case with 10 images I'm somewhat pleased with. And I thought we would look a bit closer on this image. And I've gone ahead and made a virtual copy of it. So we have the final edit and we have how it looked straight from the camera. So this is how the image looked uh, straight from the camera and when I have imported it to Lightroom. And I'm not super excited by this image. It looks all right, there's something to it and I think it's well worth uh, exploring. Looking at it, the bigger screen, seeing the details here with the, the different tonality of the sand, it kind of works, but it lacks a bit of a punch. So what I like to do when I have an image I'm not overly fond of, that I don't really like, is I like to reset everything. So I like to reset it to like the original crop. Uh, so I see the whole readout from the sensor. So I know what I'm working with. Secondly, I like to look at it. Is it properly exposed? Well, perhaps not. This is a bit underexposed. And I do tend to underexpose my digital images to kind of protect the highlights. But that's easily fixed. And we are just going to add a bit of exposure, about two thirds of a stop. This is more like it. This is probably a prop exposure. It looks all right. I don't think it's necessarily bad in black and white. But I always like to play around and try both a black and white and a color edit. I quite like the Astia soft color profile. So I just try and change it to that. And I think this has a bit more potential. So this is my starting point for my edit. As we can see on the histogram, it's quite a narrow histogram. So we have quite a bit of dead space. So what I like to do is remove some of that dead space. And I use the tone curve for that. I think it's quite visual to use the tone curve. So I'm just removing, uh, pulling in the blacks, cutting away some of this dead space here. And the same thing with the highlights. And this is basically just doing the dehaze. But I think that's quite a good starting point. I want this image to be have that soft feel to it. Uh, so I'm going to raise the mid-ground slightly. I'm still working with the tone curve. And suddenly I think we have a much more interesting image. And then I can go up and start working with my highlights and shadows etc 
and I'm just going to pull up the highlights slightly to add a bit of more light to the highlights and do the same thing too and doing the same thing with the whites not going overboard with it but uh, rising the whites and highlights slightly I'm also going to rise the shadows a bit and remove and then darken down the blacks slightly just to give it a bit of contrast to it I think this looks a bit better I also think the white balance is slightly off so I'm going to just uh, warm the image slightly to get a better color of the sand uh, I think this looks a lot better I think that digital cameras in general are a tad too sharp so to counter that, we are actually going to lower the clarity slightly, which I think gives us a lot of a softer feel. And we end up with an image I'm quite pleased with. It's 90% of the edit. I will fine tune it slightly and remove some distraction and uh, fine tune the slider slightly. But we end up with an image I'm quite pleased with. Uh, the two most powerful tools are the crop tool and the ability to change it to a color image in this case and it works a lot better as a color image the yellow against the bluer tones of the sea and the sky works really well this wasn't supposed to be an edit tutorial it was just more a reminder for myself to not be too narrow-minded and you can't always trust the camera when out in the field it's normal to be doubtful but it's also important to remember you don't regret the images you take, you regret the images you don't. And I don't mean uh, run and gun, like just shoot everything. I personally are still quite selectful. But if I see a scene I like and I think, oh, that might work as an image, I try and make the image or take the image. And sometimes they turn out a lot better than you would have ever expected out in the field. I suppose that was the long way of saying just take the image. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the video anyhow. I'll see you in the next one. Do take care and bye. Mm -hmm.